Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. Big Pharma is spending more than $100 billion this year. Last year, they spent more than $100 billion, just the top 10 on research and development, not acquisitions, just in trying to find new drugs, new indications for the drugs they have, running trials on the drugs they have, more than $100 billion. Would they come up with in the biggest unmet medical need? Nothing. Butkus, nothing, not a, not a nothing. And they're basically flailing everywhere else as well. So we'll take a look at that. And a nice day in the market. Good day in the market. We'll take a look at that. I just recommended a great stock uh, on the Tendies Club small cap newsletter. Take a look at that. We'll, we'll, we'll not talk about that one today. I will talk about that in the future, but get that one now. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. So not investment advisor, not investment advice, not a tax advisor, not tax advice. Tendies Club. I got to, uh, the problem with that dance, that dance is is much better than what it turned into. It turned into karate chops and uh, turned into karate chops. The problem with that dance is I got the microphone here. I can't, I can't swing without smacking the microphone. It's supposed to be, so there's a much, much better dance. So when I get the, I got my piece for the new microphone, you're going to see the actual attendees club. Now, well, now I'm building it up. Now I got to do a better attendees club dance, but uh, the, I'm not liking the karate chops, but it's not supposed to be karate chops and I'm going to get my microphone situation fixed. So don't you worry. So let's get started. Please like and comment and chat and subscribe and let's go. Okay. I'm, I'm always looking down to see how many people are watching and how many I'm losing and gaining. As I'm, as I'm talking about the dance, I'm losing people watching. <laughs> All right. So Cassava Sciences is up 2.27%. Good job. What is leading the league today? Well, Immune Bio, small Alzheimer's player, up 5.5%. Roblox up to up, up more than 5%. Anavex up almost 4%. Energy across the board is up more than 3%. Cortex Symes, small Alzheimer's player, up 3%. Inhibicase, Parkinson's player, up 2.4%. There's Cassava up 2.27%. Pipelines are up 2.15%. Uh, the Russell 2000, so small caps across the board, all of them are up 1.83%. Biotech, uh, small biotech up 1.7%. Tesla up 1.3%. Netlist up, and now it just went somewhere else. Netlist, uh, we'll get to that one later because it just fell off the top. Tesla up 1.4%. Materials up 1.2%. Real estate up 1.14%. Ethereum up 1.07%. Amazon also up 1.07%. Large biotech up 0.94%. Healthcare across the board up 0.87%. Gold is finally getting a bid at 0.85% up. There's Netlist up 0.81%. Utilities are up 0.79%. Where food comes from up 0.69%. Anovis up 0.68%. Australia up 0.6%. Value is up 0.56%. Japan up 0.54%. Momentum up 0.52%. There's employers up 0.47%. So that's EIG employers. There's a COVID player, EIGR. It's up like 40 something percent today. We were joking that I, I get credit for that, right? Because you get the letters that come after that, right? Cardano is up 0.44%. Corporate bonds are up 0.36%. We were joking in the Discord. Sign up to get in the Discord. The description below, uh, subscribe to the stuff. If nothing else, subscribe to the free newsletter because I'm going to be doing a bunch of new stuff on there uh, as we get go, go building the show out. So subscribe to, the, subscribe to something. Subscribe to something for goodness sake. Consumer staples up 0.22%, so toilet paper is catching a bid. Salesforce up 0.22% as well, so Salesforce trading with toilet paper apparently. GameStop is up a quarter of a percent. S&P 500 up 0.23%. Europe is up 0.19%. Consumer discretionary catching a bid as well, a little bit, 0.14%. So energy is up, but so is consumer discretionary a little bit. The whole market is really up. Uh Short bonds are flat. Financials are down 0.05%. Large tech, so the Qs are down 0.08%. Alphabet is down 0.21%. Long treasuries are down 0.42%. So is Apple. Bitcoin is down 0.81%. China off 4.57% after surging 15% yesterday, giving some back today. Russia is still halted. That's a look around the league. We'll leave cassava up. Let's go to the story here. So this is from Fierce, Fierce Biotech. This is the top 10 pharma budgets in 2021. The big idea is they're really flailing. So they're spending 
uh, more than a, just the top 10 players by my eye, quick eyeball count. It was $107 billion of spent in 2021. And what did they get for it? Nothing in the biggest unmet medical need in the world, basically. Nothing good anyway. And uh, re- they're really basically flailing. And we saw that Pfizer has a big plan. Pfizer has a big plan to do a lot of acquisitions. And they basically look like they all have to do acquisitions or partnerships, acquisitions or partnerships, because the small players are doing a lot of great innovation and the big guys don't seem to have much at all. So let's take a look. So this is from Fierce Biotech Top 10. So number one is Roche. Roche comes in number one, $16 billion spent last year. And uh, they Roche picked out, so they at least have neuroscience. They picked out two neuroscience programs as drivers of increased spending. But uh oh, anti amyloid beta and anti amyloid beta antibody gentenaranab. And then they also have something in multiple sclerosis. But the big idea is the biggest spender of all the spenders. Uh, they've got in, the, in neuroscience, well, they've got the biggest unmet medical need in the world. What are they doing? The same thing Biogen is doing that doesn't work. <laughs> the whole, uh, we had uh, Dr. Carl Harup on and interviewed him. His new book, uh, How Not to Study a Disease, is all about how the whole industry spent 25 years saying anti amyloid, anti amyloid. And now here they are with their amyloid drugs ready to go to market and they don't work and they shouldn't have been doing it the whole time. <laughs> and they spent so many billions of dollars on them. They're still spending billions of dollars on them to bring them to market because what else are they going to do? What a terrible idea. So that's the number one. That's Roche. Uh, upping its spending on digital projects, COVID-19, blood screening, and Alzheimer's. Upping its spending on Alzheimer's when all they have is a Biogen knockoff. Terrible. Uh, an Aduhelm knockoff. Terrible. And then number two is Johnson & Johnson at $14.7 billion spent in 2021, up 21% from 2020. J&J's got nothing. They got Nathan nothing nada. Outside of vaccinations, the company has taken steps forward in oncology. So they got nothing in Alzheimer's is what I'm saying. Uh, in vac- so they, they, we know about their vac- we know about their COVID-19 stuff. What else are they doing? Well, they're doing oncology, but it's not going well. So outside of vaccinations, the company has taken steps forward in its oncology program, but there were bumps in the road, specifically in the development of bermecanab. They go into that. And then the company was also forced to lick its wounds after it delayed by two years the expected timeline for human procedures using its general surgery digital robotics platform, Otava. Johnson & Johnson can't shoot straight, and they never really could for the last 10, 20 years. They're, They're such huge business. And they basically cut every corner uh, every at every step and just are always having trouble. I really, really don't like Johnson & Johnson. They also have a horrible, I mean, all big corporations have terrible corporate culture, basically. But Johnson & Johnson has led the way in horrible corporate culture for a long time. Pfizer, uh, $13.8 billion up almost uh, 50% from 2020. Well, that's not surprising with the COVID stuff. Pfizer shot up the uh, spending board quickly. Elsewhere, Pfizer is looking to bulk up its pipeline via acquisitions. We spoke about this. They're looking; hum- they're v- going to be very aggressive, so they say, in acquisitions, maybe partnering as well, with a priority on late-stage assets so the company can slide some new near-market moneymakers into the fold quickly. Pfizer still th- this makes the most sense, by really by a long way. They've got Denepazil, which is coming off partnership in July, with Isai, and so they're touching all the Alzheimer's people anyway, and they're also jabbing all the Alzheimer's people anyway. It's the same population, so it makes just so much sense to partner uh, with with uh, Cassava Sciences on Simifilam. Next up, we have Merck, twelve point two billion spent last year. It's down nine percent. Uh, they had one of only two oral antivirals virals that won the FDA's emergency authorization to treat COVID-19. Meanwhile, Merck's work for another epidemic, the 41-year HIV epidemic, suffered many setbacks in 2021. So up, so they did a good job in COVID. Their other big thing, HIV, did a terrible job. It really got uh, off horribly. And Merck's 2022 R&D got off to a shaky start as well. And so they just say they've got billions in the coffers. So who, maybe Merck can do an acquisition as well. They've got, they just are stumbling, spending tons of money and failing. Bristol Myers spent $11.3 billion last year. 
They're big into oncology, of course. Of course, they're big into oncology, Bristol, Bristol Myers. Oncology continued to be uh, the BMS bread and butter for R&D. This year didn't start on the best note for R&D ambitions, though, so they're not doing too well either. Their CAR-T treatment not doing too well. Uh, so, And they've got nothing for Alzheimer's. Nathan. Then there's AstraZeneca, $9.7 billion. And COVID-19 and late-stage oncology, okie dokie. But Nathan, nothing, nada for Alzheimer's. And they're spending $10 billion. We're about the biggest unmet medical need in the world. So they're going to spend $10 billion on, on everything else. They could easily spend a lot of money partnering or buying out somebody like Cassava Sciences. And then we have Novartis. $9 billion spent last year. A constant theme for the company's collaborations was mid to late stage candidates, which painted a clear picture of Novartis investment strategy. So isn't that interesting? Maybe they have the right idea. A constant theme for the company's collaborations was mid to late stage candidates, which painted a clear picture of Novartis investment strategy. So... Another December collaboration was with UCB, a Belgian big pharma that's been prioritizing neuroscience. The two companies announced they'd be co-developing and commercializing UCB's candidate for Parkinson's that's currently in phase true, phase two. The agreement was also, also gave Novartis the ability to opt in on another Parkinson's candidate once it wraps up its phase one test. The deal cost Novartis $150 million up front with more than $1.3 billion possible pending regulatory approval. Uh, if you look at Inhibicase, Inhibicase is market cap. I don't even know if it's 40 million. It's, it's, a, it's like 40 million, 35 million. So th these guys got uh, four times that in an upfront payment with uh, 10 times more than that or thereabouts in, uh, in possible payments. So if you look, so who knows? I, I happen to really like Dr. Milton Warner and Inhibicase Therapeutics. It's one of our recommendations on the small cap news that are checked that out. But they're a, a very interesting player in Parkinson's. And if things work out for them, they could easily be a 40X or, or, or better. So check that out. But I thought Novartis, of all these, at least Novartis is partnering with mid to late stage instead of floundering. Everybody else seems to be floundering. It's the small players that are doing things. And uh, it's really ripe season for companies like Cassava and many and in Hibicase, many others uh, to... to uh, to, to get some deals. So maybe Novartis has the right idea. Then there's Glaxo, $7.2 billion spent last year. Two approvals didn't completely overshadow the backlash from Glaxo's backers. Most notably, active invest in, activist investor group Elliott Management, which repeatedly called for drastic changes in the big farmer's leadership, including replacing the CEO as one of the largest vaccine makers in the world. GSK was contributing to two COVID-19 vaccines in 2021 with partners Sanofi and Medicago, but those collaborations didn't reach key milestones until 2022. So Glaxo is a big vaccine maker and they missed out on COVID basically. And uh, the shareholders are not happy in that respect. And so the research and development not going well for them. They don't have anything in Alzheimer's. Well, they're blowing a lot of money for for what? For what? Cassava Sciences market cap is not even two billion dollars. This is ludicrous, ludicrous, ludicrous spending. Here is Abvi. Abvi of all of these, uh, we, we we said we said perhaps Novartis and and Pfizer as well because they're looking to collaborate. But AbbVie as well. So Novartis, Pfizer, they're looking to collaborate. And Pfizer has the Alzheimer's. They just make so much sense. But at least Novartis seems to be have the right idea in collaborating. AbbVie as well. So $7.1 billion for AbbVie last year. Collaborations galore for the Illinois Pharma. AbbVie also extended its collaboration with Coleco, a life sciences company co-founded and backed by Google parent Alphabet to help develop therapies for conditions affecting old age, such as neurodegenerative diseases and cancer. The collaboration began in 2014 and was first extended in 2018. Now each company is contributing $500 million to extend it once more. Under the conditions of the deal, Coleco will be responsible for early stage development until 2025 and advancing collaborations with AbbVie through phase 2A trials through 2030. At that point, AbbVie will have the option to exclusively license the joint projects. So far, the partnership has resulted in three assets brought to clinic, including two in phase one, treating solid tumors. 
AbbVie's work in neurodegenerative diseases is not just limited to Coleco, however. Phase 3 data of the company's subcutaneous infusion treatment for Parkinson's showed it improved patients' movement and that it more than doubled patients on time compared to the oral alternative, which is a measure of symptom control. Yet adverse effects resulted more than a fifth of patients treated with the infusions to stop, stop treatment. So not going too well, that's, that's not very good if, if uh, more than a fifth had to stop the treatment. That's not too good, and it's not a it, it's, it's it's an injection rather than oral, and more than a fifth have to stop because of the side effects. That's not too good. They got treatment in solid tumors, but where's the Alzheimer's? They're trying, so they got the right idea, and they're partnering with Google. Great, but where's the Alzheimer's treatments? They don't have any. They're trying, but they at least have the the right idea collaborating. So, uh, and then Lily came in last. This is just a disaster. This is just disgusting. This is like, this is just vomit. Eli Lilly, $7 billion. The Indianapolis Big Pharma's R&D story is all about two assets right now. Donna Nemimab and Terzepatid. The first is for Alzheimer's disease. The second is for type 2 diabetes. Well, good luck in type 2 diabetes. But but they're pressing forward with Donna Nemimab. Of course, there's more in Alzheimer's disease. Behind Donna Nemimab, Lilly has Selenzumab. This is another... Uh, amyloid beta, same thing. They're, they're clearing amyloid beta plaques. Again, Salenzumab is doing it. So is Donemimab, just like Biogen's Aduhelm. All three are doing the same thing and it doesn't work. The whole industry spent 25 years acting like it did work. They spent so many billions of dollars getting to this point and they're Lily worse than anybody except Biogen, I guess, uh, is pushing ahead or trying to push ahead. Roche is as well, but Lily is really trying to push ahead with it. Uh, it's behind Donanemimab, Lily has Selenzumab, but prospects for that treatment are a little rocky. It's moved slowly through a phase trial in patients with mild disease and early onset inherited form of Alzheimer's. As of September 21, results were due in a few years. Company also trimmed Zagotenimab. That was a tau treatment. At least they're trying something different with tau, but that didn't work either. A uh, company also trimmed Zagotemimab from the pipeline on October 21 after a failed mid-stage trial. Looking even earlier in Lilly's pipel- pipeline, the company nabbed a breakthrough therapy designation from the amyloid-lowering agent N3PG4, for which trials are expected to get underway by the end of the year. Lilly says it has evidence for this treatment can completely and rapidly clear amyloid plaque. And then there's OGICNA case inhibitor targeting tau currently in phase two. So maybe that other tau treatment, maybe that'll work. Other than that, there's nothing. And they're pressing ahead with these amyloid uh, therapies, these amyloid, this amyloid crap. So, and that's it. That's all the, uh, that's the top 10. So, and somebody asked for the short numbers. Here's the short numbers, latest I could find, 30.96. And off exchange, short volume ratio. Not even actually sure what that is. I'll check what that is. But 30.96, so down slightly. Latest short numbers. With that, tendies, friendies, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Daily Mix. Hi, Joe. I'm so excited for Cassava's data to come out <laughs> more than waiting for Christmas. I know what you mean, my friend. I know what you mean, my friend. I know what you mean. Guys, please hit like. But by the way, I'm glad there's 62 people. Thank you for being here. Please hit like. It helps the algorithm. Please hit like. Please hit like. Thank you, Daily Mix, my friend, for being here. Thank you. Jake, I beat you to it. Jake yesterday asked for Orex data. That Orex, sorry, Orex site, quite a cool site. And uh, I had that up. And then it said, oh, your free trial is over. Well, hey, <laughs> that didn't last long. So I went and got it from somewhere else. So thank you, Jake. Andrew, thanks for all the great info you've been putting out. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the thank you. Jake, I live in Saskatchewan, and we do not participate in daylight savings. Our time stays the same all year. I get my attendees one hour earlier now. Hey, <laughs> you stayed the same, and the universe came to you. And now you're going to have to, you just have to, I suppose you'll have to move two hours east or two hours west, whatever, <laughs> when we fall back again. Uh, awesome. That's cool, man. Is SK Saskatchewan? Dale, like is fun. If you like today, oh, you're going to like liking like. In fact, today you can like 
for free. Yes, normally it, it costs, on other channels, it costs a lot of money to like, so never like on anybody else's channel, especially financial channels, especially like Jim Cramer, never like on there. I think it's free to dislike him, but it costs a lot of money to like on those channels, but here it's free to like. So go ahead and like. In fact, I bet you get a lot of money. I'm, in fact, I'm sure, but you probably get a lot of money for liking. <laughs> so thanks, Dale. Thank you very much for the for the Dale. Short squeeze happening over on Mulin. Go Saba. Mulin Rouge, good to know. Hey, Quezzy, good to see you, my friend. How you doing, my friend? Great to see you, Quezzy. Thank you for being here, buddy. Johnny, hi, Joe. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, my friend. Thank you for reminding me. That's right. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I meant to wear green. How did that go? <laughs> Ah, Jay's got me. Where's your green? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. I think I wore it early, I, two days ago. I think I wore it two days ago. Hi, Joe. Uh, joining your uh, your great show again. Thank you, Rainer, for being here. Rainer, great to see you. Uh, great to see you, my friend. Try the Carlton dance. Yeah, I remember the Carlton dance. <laughs> Maybe we'll work that into it. <laughs> Quezzy and Joe, nice pink shirt. Thank you, my friend. I read that real men wear pink, no doubt. I'm looking at one now. Great to see you. Loked. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you. Real men, real men wear pink. That's right. I'll wear pink in like during the day inside in like a corporate environment. I don't know if I'll wear pink walking down the street at night. <laughs> Tim, what kind of conference is Remy going to speak at? I think you meant to mean to say at what kind of conference is Remy going to speak? Any idea what will be discussed? They should do more biotech investment presentations. It's a fireside chat, and I guess it's a virtual one. So my guess is just a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, virtually is, is what it is, I think. Uh, so my guess is we're going to get, he'll, he'll be going over the presentation that we already got. They didn't do a release on that one, and we've been putting pressure on him to go out there and talk. So now we're going to give him backlash for not having all kinds of new stuff that's not new to us from, as of the presentation a couple of days ago. But maybe there'll be uh, City University of New York news before then. That would be totally awesome. Um, and, and, and more, maybe we'll just get data before then as well. Although I think data will wait for City University of New York. Thanks, Tim. Sorry to bust your chops on the preposition. Rinner just saw a video from a doctor of biotechnology showing that shorts prefer Western blot as the reason for their attacks because Western blots are... Nobody knows what the heck to talk about. Interesting stuff. Thank you, Rainer. Thank you. Interesting. Chuck, I wonder if Remy has considered sending a random sample of duplicate specimens to the labs. Given the previous history of lab misreads, any issues would be immediately detected. I don't know. Interesting. Tim, do you think all the FUD that Sava has may scare the big players? And well, on one hand, I don't think that they. I, mean, I think they're 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 uh, they're adults, and they understand that this that the there's such high stakes that there is going to be uh, all sorts of propaganda because the stakes are so high. When there's billions of dollars at stake, all the mud slinging just seems so cheap. And if it can work at all, why not do it for a million or two dollars? You could get an army of idiots to say a bunch of stuff, and they did. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I think they've seen it all before. They're, they're, I, think they're, I think they can see through it anyway. But it's a good question. Johnny, thank you, Joe, for the reminder of the tremendous value small companies like Saba present to Big Pharma. Yeah, it really is striking. $100 billion, and for what? They're all floundering and wasting money. A lot of it. The, the big pharma, they got the prices jacked through the roof, so they've got to, uh, so they're making so much money. And then what are they doing with it? They're just, what are they doing with it? Seems to me that big pharma should tender their buyout offers now if they want to get cassava for a good price. I mean, it could never get better. If they wait until approval, they'll pay full price unless, and, unless that's Remy's game plan. Yeah, I agree. Saskatchewan, yes, indeed. Woohoo! Thank you, my friend. Jay, haha, -ha, free to just like Jim Cramer. LOL, good one. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you get paid for that one, too. SMNB, hi, Joe. Do you think the City University of New York has a date within they have to respond like the FDA or that can they respond whenever they want? Why does it take so long? Uh, somebody did uh, find on one of their sites or published somewhere, they do have self-imposed guidelines for internal investigations and it puts it in April. And like it puts it in end of, to put like end of March would, would be in the timeline into April, not later than April. So the clock is either, is, is it's, the timeline is beginning now 
into April, something like that. It, it starts sometime in March and ends sometime in April. So, and they don't have to be held by those guidelines. This is their tenured per, uh, professor. Uh, there's, if they find nothing, there's no reason to leave them in limbo, you know. Hasn't Remy done a fireside with them before? He's done at least one other fireside, I guess it was with them, I think. It's kind of an odd thing to call fireside chats, kind of weird. Jay, Joe, if a buyout negotiation ever took place with a big pharma, would they center around the Sava share price or the drug's profit potential? Well, the Sava would center around the drug's profit potential, and the big pharma would center around the share price. <laughs> because... Uh, the, the, because the, the, that, that's what they have the incentive to do. Big Pharma would say, oh, well, gee, the market's not valuing you very much, even though they've printed 10 times as many more shares than, than you actually issued. Uh, so that's why if, it, I mean, if there's going to be... Now, if there's partnerships and it's all just based on put up or shut up, and if, it's, if the drug sales, they make a lot of money, then who cares? And eventually they can pay cash dividends and screw the heck out of the shorts, and that'll be wonderful stuff. And we, we heard Remy allude to cash infusions, which sounded like partnerships. So we'll see. We shall see my tendies friendies. And with that tendies friendies, tendying once, tendying twice, tender your shares. Uh, sign up for the newsletters and you can check out those small cap picks. Got a really good pick this time. Got a really good, <laughs> for a change. No, they're all really good. This one is just like Elders. It's a great company, uh, and it's gonna print quarter after, a lot of great quarters. It's gonna have a lot of great catalysts sending it higher quarter after quarter. Uh, so sign up for the newsletter. If your share, if your stock picks stink, sign up for the small cap newsletter, and uh, you can have, and there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of, you can see all the picks I've already had, and, uh, and the la latest one, too, from today. Jay, do you think the FUD could be caused for industrial espionage more than just big pharma, perhaps consortiums of elder care centers of retirement homes or home health care? Wow, they stand to lose billions. Holy moly, I didn't think about that. Wow, yeah. Elder care centers, retirement homes, home health care. That if yeah, if there was no more problems with Alzheimer's disease, they would lose billions. I didn't think about that. Ugh. Ugh. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Just popping in to say happy St. Patty's Day. Now I'm off to drink some Guinness. Happy St. Patty's Day, John Daly. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Top of the morning to ya. <laughs> or whatever. That was not a very good accent, but uh, thanks so much, guys, for being here. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, hope you are having a great, great uh, week in the market. So let's hope it keeps going. And uh, tomorrow after the close, we'll hear from Dr. Milton Werner in Spain talking Parkinson's. And uh, <laughs> Jay says, I don't want to think about it either. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll finish it off tomorrow. Over the weekend, I'll get going with the set here. That'll be really good. Uh, sign up for at least the free newsletter or, or sign up and join the Discord. Read the book, The Guide to Crushing the Market, that I wrote. Number one rank stock analyst in the world, by the way. So, Mule, no, I'll, I'll check Mule out. Moulin Rouge. Moulin, Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Mule and Automotive, interesting. 38%. Uh, I don't see why it's up. Anybody, anybody, any info on why Mulan is up? So it looks like an, it doubled in price or 40% uh, 40 up. So it was, it went from like 60 million in market cap to 85 million. So a nice small player. So not, I don't see any news on it. So maybe somebody's short covering if, if we don't, can't see what's going on, I guess, short covering. So interesting stuff. Chuck says, uh, let, me, let me try this. Chukwamiko Mwazi says, it would seem that the true beneficiaries of the short campaigns are the institutions picking up the stock at a nice discount. I mean, that could, I mean they have the incentive, absolutely. So 
you could you could destroy it and and spread all the fud because you want to buy it because you like it. <laughs> it's if they like it, they don't have the incentive to say good things. One hundred and thirty five percent short interest on Mulan. Okay, that'll do it. And if it has anything to do with uh, China, you know, with with China saying they're going to back the tech stock, so I don't know if it does or not, but. Interesting. Yeah, 135% short interest on Mule, and that'll do it, Jake. Thanks. Holy moly. That should do it. Talk about a company that should issue a, issue a dividend. Good Lord. Thank you guys so much for being here. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, sign up for the Discord. Read the book. Sign up for the everything. Uh, subscribe, like, chat. Come back tomorrow at noon. We'll have a, we'll have a great show tomorrow. Uh, join the Discord and tell me what you want to hear. We'll, we'll talk about uh, anything you want to. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll get the set going for next week. It'll be a lot of fun. I want to get the show uh, uh, expanded and, and larger. It'll be a lot of fun. So I'm lo looking forward to doing that with you. So have a wonderful night. Happy St. Patrick's Day. See you tomorrow.